Hey everybody, Derek here with Fun Center TV, part of the FEC network. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're talking about location, more specifically the one thing that can literally make or break your business. I'm talking, of course, about parking. for this webcast is brought to you by Creative Works, delivering the wow effect one client at a time. See them on the web at thewowaffect.com. Having been in the industry since 1995, we've come across a lot of projects and thereby a lot of locations. As I'm fond of saying, there are two giant rocks on the road for every new fund center developer, location and funding. We'll get to funding in other podcasts, but for today, let's talk a little bit about parking, some considerations and requirements, and how to best determine the parking needs for your new Fun Center business. And oh, I'd also like to mention that for the most part, discussions, ideas, topics covered here on Fun Center TV are primarily focused on indoor startup projects that are built within lease space, usually in light industrial or secondary or older retail locations. We don't focus too much on outdoor parks or projects that are multi-acre and built from the ground up. So, the exciting topic of parking. You know, there are so many things that need to be considered when you first start out. Parking is probably not high on your list. However, you can have the most awesome fun center with all of the latest attractions and none of that will really matter if enough people can't get into your location. Often pushed aside for the more inspirational and creative process of design, attraction mix, and layout, parking can be an afterthought for new developers that comes up too late in the development process and well after the new developer has gotten all excited over the perfect location. One of the worst things that can happen to a new family entertainment center is to open for business and then find out that you've underestimated the number of parking spaces required. Now obviously it's important that you've determined whatever restrictions apply to your facility before making a commitment to lease that space. However, insufficient parking for guests can result in people not being able to park when they get to your facility or making them walk great distances to your front door in inclemental weather, mothers with strollers in hand, and other inconveniences from accessible parking maybe across the street or worse down the road. This diminishes the experience of your guests and chips away at your brand, not to mention lost revenue from guests that can't find parking. Many communities have extensive planning, zoning, and parking ordinances that set out specific regulations governing the parking requirements within specific zoning classifications. So for example, some agencies may base parking requirements on square footage of your location. Others may also apply requirements based on the number of arcade games or perhaps the type of food service you provide. Because the FEC is little understood by many community agencies, the regulatory requirements, including zoning and permits, can often be out of line with what the FEC really needs or how we actually operate our centers. Interesting, what's been discovered over the years for family entertainment centers is that the regulatory requirements do not always provide for enough adequate parking. Now you may be thinking that's good news because it means that awesome location you were looking at on the weekend with only 10 parking stalls falls within appropriate parking requirements and zoning. Yes! But comes that busy weekend and you watch guests drive in and then right back out of your parking lot because the lot is full and you only have 10 stalls, not so happy now, are we? The likelihood of guests coming back after being unable to find a parking spot decreases with the amount of time it took them to drive to your facility. The further away they came, the less likely they'll come back. We're customers, we know this, right? One thing that new developers sometimes overlook is staff parking. For smaller party centers, this may be a single car during the week, but may eat up two, three, or more spaces on the weekends, especially if you have staff overlap during shift changes. Always make your staff park in the least convenient area. And this includes you. In case you just landed from an alien planet or haven't worked in a retail guest service environment before, for the long-term success of your business, the customer is number one. Always. 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 Notice I didn't say the customer's always right, but the customer is number one. Putting their needs above yours or your staff's just makes good business sense. 
That's my opinion anyway. Another consideration for your fun center parking is groups. If you plan on attracting various groups and events, having adequate space for larger vehicles and bus parking becomes important. This is something that needs to be considered early on in your business planning. How aggressive will you be in targeting this market and what kind of potential group business do you hope to attract on what days during what hours? Other considerations for adequate parking may include a safe drop-off and pickup area as well as handicap parking and uh, access to site loading zone for deliveries of supplies, etc. And there are also considerations for access and egress. Is there plenty of area overall for multiple cars into and out of your location? You know how that little strip mall gets the last week before Christmas when nothing moves? Take a look at the area in general. How tight are the parking stalls? Can you visualize several cars coming and going at once? Or will there be dramatic bottlenecks on a busy weekend? Speaking of which, for any location you might be considering, get out and visit the area several different times on different days. What's it like on a Saturday afternoon? What's it like at 7 p.m. on a Tuesday evening? Or when it's dark? What's it like when it's raining? So, a lot of considerations for parking. And the best way to approach the needs of your fun center is to consider all of the above and then base your initial parking requirements on the following. Take the total attractions on site and the maximum activity that each can support during your peak hours. If you're doing big party business, for example, that's typically Saturday from noon to four. Add to that a consideration of those people not engaged in any activity, but just hanging out and watching others. Then the general assumption is that 3.2 guests arrive per car. So once you've calculated the total peak hour capacity of all of your attractions and services, divide that number by 3.2 to arrive at a peak capacity parking requirement. From there, other variables can be used to determine a balanced parking demand based on your total weekly operating hours. Of course, access to parking is based on location itself, right? And we will be covering location and zoning in some detail in upcoming podcasts. But as a starting point, knowing what the peak demand might look like will help you in choosing the right location with an adequate amount of parking. And be sure to connect with your local building and zoning office, as well as the Chamber of Commerce for specific requirements and other great local business resources. So I hope this episode has been insightful. Please feel free to leave us your comments. We'd love to hear from you. Did you like this episode? Did you not like this episode? Well, only those comments. <laughs> Maybe you've been location hunting and have experienced some parking issues yourself. Let us know in the show notes below. If you have any specific questions or want to discuss your project without obligation, feel free to call on us at any time. And if you stop by our Facebook page, say hello, I'll send you a copy of our 10-page FEC business guide. For more resources and startup support, stop by the Fun Center Academy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep moving forward.